my compression release broke on my tractor. It's three years old. That high quality Briggs and Scranton compression release. Jesus Christ. Hold on one second. <laughs> what is happening? Oh, for fuck's sakes. There. Good fucking God. How's she going, eh? All right. So, on my three-year-old tractor, I've been, last couple times I've gone to start it, it's been hard starting. I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought maybe there was some gas flooding the cylinder or something. Um, turned out with a little more, took the valve cover off, checked the valves, and my compression release was not working. Incredibly common problem on these single cylinder brakes. I want to show you the cheap solution I came up with because when I was looking for uh, camshafts on Amazon, I don't recommend you buy a Chinese one. Um, the reviews seem like there was plenty of horror stories. And I bought one to look at it and it's just not, it's not very nice. It's pretty poorly made. It's not even, the, the spots that the parts are pressed on aren't even in the same, oh, I'll show you guys, come on. All right, so here's the kit I got. Uh, it came in this box. Uh, the gasket was folded up, which everybody had complained about on there. I knew it was coming. So I put it in a book, and you can see how it's nice and straight now. I would recommend buying the actual name brand cam if you have a cam issue. However, if you have a compression release issue, if just the compression release is broken off, I have a possible solution for you. The compression release is typically right here. I have it off, that's part of my fix. Here's the seals. The seals seem okay. I don't see any issue with the seals that came with it. You know, I think it comes at the top too. Um, under the flywheel, I believe, is what that seal is. I won't be changing it. Here's the lifters that come with it. They are they're just crappy. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. You can see the edges are all dinged and dented and kind of crappy looking. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's not great. This one's a little bit better. So that's all the parts that came with the kit. I have no intention of using any of them. I literally bought the whole kit just to get the compression release. If you can find somewhere to buy the compression release, feel free to comment below in the video and let people know. So this was the original Briggs, and I found this crap in the bottom, like this. You know, pulled the cam out, and I found this junk in the bottom, so. Okay, so here's the broken compression release. And what happens is it breaks. This again, this is the Briggs crank. This guy sits like this. His spring goes over, and he sits like that, okay? Obviously, you saw that on the other one. It sits like that, but this piece that broke off here goes, is normally attached. It's all one piece, like this, like this guy. See how that's all one piece? The skinny part and that little nub. This little nub is just this part broken off. So the compression release, as you can see, this is the brakes cam. I moved the compression release over. When, when the engine's at rest, see this little guy sitting right here. As the engine spins around, I actually believe it's this way, as soon as it gets started, gets past a certain RPM, this guy opens up, okay? And now, as you can see, when you go past the lobe again, with it open, it actually should be laying flat it lays completely flat and you should be able to run your finger, like there should there should be no bump there once you have it open. It should be completely flat. I sold the compression release off the new one by shoving this rod out. Okay, it's going to be in here like this. Just to make this very clear again, it's going to be in here with this piece on here and you got to push the rod back out and then you can take this piece off with the spring. So I'm going to use the original, uh, all the original parts except for 
like I said, that compression release. You can look up another video about what the symptoms are, but the symptoms are essentially your engine won't turn over, but you got good voltage on your battery, and you'd want to test your battery um, under load with either a load tester or test the voltage while you're cranking and uh, make sure it's staying adequate. But what you want to do to verify is take off the valve cover if you suspect that there's an issue with your compression release. Just take off the valve cover. There's some videos you can watch, but essentially you're just going to turn over the engine by hand, the flywheel, open, intake open, and then the intake should get bumped again a little bit right before top dead center. Well, not right before top dead center. I guess it's a ways before top dead center, but you should get a bump from this compression release. If this is missing or broken off, it's just going to it's going to hit against the flywheel. It may even try to start backwards. I've seen that happen where you turn the key, it hits against the flywheel. It actually ends up detonating but spins backwards cuz it can't overcome the compression stroke. So as you can see, they just press a rod through this little hole here. Uh, but again, there's definitely a difference in the spring tension, which I'm not super excited about. I might actually try and swap the springs as well, if that's a possibility. I'm not sure if it's going to be, though, because that plastic looks like it'd be pretty difficult to get out. Hard to say. I might just try it anyway, though. This way you guys uh, have an idea if it's possible to do. So we'll move that broken guy out of the way. I'm going to try and press this plastic piece out. There we go. So we're going to press this plastic piece out of the compression release, like voile. Okay. So now we got our three pieces. Oh, and our rod. Four pieces. I'm going to go to the old compression release. Same thing. I'm going to push this rod out. Now hopefully, again, you're going to want to take your shit apart first if you're going to try and do this and make sure that you, you know, your spring could all be broken and stuff. So it's hard to say. All right, and then we're going to copy. I'm going to move this over to the other one. So it sits like this with this little guy up here. So we'll go ahead and swap it over. The Briggs spring is much stronger. And uh, I trust that way more than the Chinese spring. So let's try and get this all in here. There we go. We get the spring in there. And then we're going to take, we're going to use the one from the Chinese thing. Make sure you don't try and force it. It's only going to fit in one very particular way. You obviously need to line up these, this triangle hole with the triangle hole, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know if you'll have to clean it off a little bit to get it in there. And then also, I think probably once I get it in there, I will put a little glue on it or something. You may have to uh, clean up this plastic piece to get it back in. Okay. Now we got the Briggs spring in there, which seems to have way more, a billion times more strength than the crappy spring that it came with. Now, we got our Briggs cam, we got this dude here, we're going to put him over, but we're going to have the spring on the top. See that? The spring's got to be on the top. See? Spring up here, plastic. This thing, where, see where this hot spot is on the cam? cam? That's where that stupid spring's supposed to ride. Oh, 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 oh. Then we go from the back. Oh, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys about. This surface right here, uh, all this flat part, clean it up with like some 2000 grit. It is pretty ugly, if you can see that. See the shitty finish on that? It's friggin' horrific compared to the other one. So I cleaned it actually, especially the edges, like here that didn't have broken edges. They were all mangled and shit. So anyway, it's the big hole. We're gonna go through the big hole and Briggs, this is what really makes the difference is it seems like they do a bushing in this hole or they do something. This hole is machined much better than on the Chinese one. 
So when this thing's on the Chinese camshaft, it has all sorts of slop in it. And you don't want that because, you know, you got literally stuff riding over it. Anyway, this part's hard to show, but you have to get this weird triangular piece lined up again. I guess you could look at it from this side. Make sure that spring is over top like that. Try and get this triangular piece lined up. And once you do, we're going to shove it through if I can ever get it lined up again. Is that going to be lined up? I don't know. Not 100% sure here. Seems kind of like it's lined up. Okay, hold on now. I'm going to make sure we got this guy fully set on that shaft. You know, because that big shaft's going to stop eventually coming through here. Now, I th believe your compression release, you want it riding right up against this black guy here. And I believe that stops it from going out any further. Anyway, so there we go. So now you can test it and make sure that when you go this way, this is why you want to clean up that surface because when you open your compression release, you want this to be a flat surface. You don't want the, when it, when it was on the Chinese cam for some reason, it was kind of cocked over to the side a little bit like this. You don't want your valves banging into shit like that. So that black, that black thing there is going to be your stop point. You really can't go towards the cam and, and what you want and this is another big difference why you have to switch the spring out. That other spring is way too weak. It can't be, you can't be doing this shit and it gets stuck. Because if it gets stuck like this, you're going to have the same problem. You're not, you're not going to have the compression release and you won't be able to start the stupid thing. Now, the other problem on the other one that I noticed was this guy just had a tremendous amount of slop in it from this backside bushing or whatever they do here this hole is just not machined to the right size or it's a little bigger on this guy that hole right there where the compression release goes through and you get a lot of slop not to mention these are just some subpar looking cantaloupes they look like dog shit compared to these ones these are smooth smooth for a tractor anyway so yeah now we got a compression release that works and that isn't going to get in the way when it's flung open it's going to be acceptable clearance so anyway that was the that's kind of the quick video i wanted to do